Hello and welcome everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and the show is called My Strategy. My Strategy episodes are on Saturdays. They're live. Uh, they're at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. In this show, we're going to talk about example leadership. We're going to talk about leading by example. We are always leading by example. We're going to learn to lead by example, get a Navy SEALs perspective on it, talk a little bit about example leadership to gain trust, and also give you some tips to help you build your example leadership strategy. We're very happy to be here with you today. Saturday is a great day of the week to reflect on your strategy. But any day really is a good day for you to reflect on your strategy and assess what you are doing. The My Strategy Radio Show is growing. We're available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more digital platforms. So if you'd like to go back and listen to any of the past podcasts, you can find them on those platforms. You can find me on most social media platforms. My Twitter handle is at HawkinsJohn. And my uh, website is johnmhawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and plan in place to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. And this week, I'm looking for stories on example leadership or leading by example. Do you have any good examples, a tip or a trick? Please send it to John to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or if you have ideas for the show, you can also send those in. And weekly, we do give away a gift to the top submission. Um, this week, we've not yet put up our giveaway. Uh, so if you check into um, either Hawkins John on Twitter or johnmhawkins.com, uh, you'll see the latest giveaway. And actually, I should say that we went from a weekly giveaway to a monthly giveaway. And this quarter, uh, we're going to be doing something special uh, through February. So check the website, and you'll find out all the details on what we're planning uh, for this year. All right, in this uh, show, we're going to talk about example leadership. We're going to talk about how we are all example leaders, and we are always needing to, we are always leading by example. We're going to talk a little bit about learning to lead by example and what a leader should do, uh, double standards, deflating your balloon. Make sure that you walk the walk. We're going to talk then a little bit about a Navy SEAL's perspective on leadership by example, such as getting your hands dirty, watch what you say, respect the chain of command. And I think we're going to then juxtapose that with a secondary perspective, uh, talking about example leadership to gain trust, where it's more about sensitive to people's feelings, choosing your battles wisely, resolving interpersonal problems quickly. And the reason why I want to cover those two different uh, nuances to example leadership is to show that there are different ways to look at this topic. We're then going to talk a little bit about developing your leadership philosophy, talk about what a leadership philosophy is and uh, how you can go about then developing your own strategy uh, when it comes to example leadership. We've got an article here by Michael Schraj. It says, like it or not, you're always leading by example. He says, even the most sophisticated psychometrics and people analytics have yet to make leadership development more science than art to include character, creativity, charisma, which all remain difficult qualities to quantify and to cultivate. Growing effective leaders is challenging work. And I think that really is you know, sums up what we're trying to do here. We're trying to figure out a formula. We're trying to figure out a way to assess, to analyze on this show. And when it comes time to some of the more qualitative aspects, such as being an example leader, you're going to find that it really takes understanding the subject uh, before we can really put a strategy in place. He says, um, the attributes that we so admire oft, often aren't always the behaviors that leaders do display. Their truism lacks pra pragmatism. He says, fortunately, a simple question evokes greater awareness and actionable insights than a typical 360-degree review. The question is, how do you lead by example? That means asking leaders to deal detail instances and anecdotes where their actions set standards for others what they do actually 
do that and what they, what do they actually do that influence as and inspires. And I think that's an important thing here from a leadership perspective is what are the things the leaders are doing that help us to not only influence us, but also inspire us to do a better job. Um, he says uh, he's found no other better diagnostic for promoting authentic revelations around personal leadership style and substance. For one, it is non-judgmentally presumes people already lead by and thus set good examples. For another, it pushes leaders to think harder about how they interpret their behaviors. He says, in the past 15 years, no one has ever said they can't, don't, or won't lead by example. To the contrary, executives always volunteer lead by example stories and that they felt revealed something important about themselves. Their answers expose their expectations, whether realistic or otherwise, and how their actions would be perceived by colleagues, clients, investors, etc. Charm and charisma are wonderful, but good examples can prove as persuasive as a great presence. I think this is an important thought here and an important uh, thing that we need to be thinking about with regard to example leadership. You're going to find that much of the research shows that while leaders always say that they are leading by example, in, in some cases, what the leader thinks, their perception and the reality and how that is seen by those in the organization are two different things. And so, you know, as you start to think about your own personal development and your own leadership style, know that this is a potential gap that could be out there with our own example leadership. And that as we look at some of these leadership examples about those uh, leaders who lead, you know, large organizations, they too find themselves in some of these shortcomings. He says, encourage people to listen to the three most important or effective ways they lead by example. Talk about them all you want. Ultimately, they must be written down in a shareable format. Those answers begin building productive paths and a platform for leadership development. He says, here's a few examples from his work with Silicon Valley executives. A Silicon Valley startup CEO attended his company diversity inclusive training workshop for the entire day. Everyone needed to know I took it seriously, he said. A manufacturing executive pointed to her on off site Spanish lessons so that she could better communicate with her workforce. Senior project managers cited highly public immediate dismissal of a direct report who had fudged a quality control audit and then lied about it. A founder and entrepreneur immediately pointed to promoting the college dropout into senior management position over an MBA. He wanted his people to value performance of his credentials. Uh, this goes on and on and on, but he says these brief examples shall share the revelatory self-belief that they merit admiration and emulation. They actively, not just verbally, communicate the value of leadership personally and professionally, but believes it important. So these are the definitions of what people shared, or these are examples of what people shared for example leadership. But my question is, are these really, um, you know, examples of what leading by example is all about? So he says, look at the content, read the, go through the content and see what the leader's values and priorities are. Influence, what influence and impact do these examples actually have on the people's perception and behavior? And reciprocity, how do one's bosses, colleagues, and direct reports lead by example? How do their leadership examples impact and influence our own? Lead by example content is both a mirror and window into the leadership sense of self. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM and Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about learning to lead by example. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. I'm John M. Hawkins. You're listening to the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is called My Strategy. Today we're talking about example leadership or learning to lead by example. Right before the break, we talked about uh, how we are all leaders, and we are always leading by example. 
Uh, in this segment, I want to talk a little bit about learning to lead by example. I've got an article here, uh, which is a website that I frequently get information from. It is called uh, Mind Tools, and they have you know, great uh, topics out there uh, with regard to personal development, and this one specifically is called Learning to, or Leading by Example. How to Lead a Team Honestly and Authentically. It says here, the, and the author of this is Bruna Martinuzzi. How to Lead a Team Honestly and Authentically. There's the boss who tells everyone to stay late and then promptly leaves at 5 p.m. to go out. There's the supervisor who criticizes everyone for spending time on the Internet, but is then discovered buying groceries online in the middle of the afternoon. And the CFO who recommends layoffs to stop unnecessary spending, but then buys themselves brand new luxury office equipment. Do you know any of these people? There's hardly anything worse for a company morale than leaders who don't practice the do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do philosophy. When this happens, you can almost see the loss of enthusiasm and goodwill amongst the staff. It's like watching the air go out of a balloon. And cynicism and disappointment usually take its place, no matter what the situation. This is a double standard. Witnessing people say one thing and then doing another always feels like a betrayal. It can be very destructive. If this ever happened to you, you can probably remember the sense of disappointment and letdown. I think this is a very important key thing with regard to example leadership, and that is the double standard. When the boss says one thing, yet they do another. And what this does is this destroys trust. And when trust is broken, it becomes very difficult to lead. And in fact, we did a whole podcast on trust. If you're interested in l learning more about trust and how that can impact personal development, uh, you can go look up that past episode. It says, if you're in a leadership position, then you know that you have a responsibility to your team. They look to you for guidance and strength. Strength, that's a big part of what being a leader is. And a big part of your responsibility is to lead them with your own actions. So why is it so important to lead by example and when you don't? It says, as a leader, part of your job is to inspire the people around you to push themselves and in turn the company to greatness. To do this, you must show them the way by doing it yourself. So I want you to just think about that. In the prior segment, we learned that uh, an executive coach who talks with many leaders finds that what they say and giving their examples of what they're doing might not really be perceived as being leadership by example uh, to the, their constituents, to their peers, or to those subordinates. So it's really important for us to try and understand exactly what that means. He said, stop, and so the, this author here says, stop and think about the inspiring people who have changed the world with their examples. And this is kind of the approach of looking at other people who have done example leadership well so that we can learn how to do it in our own life. And she says, consider what Mahatma Gandhi accomplished through his actions. He spent most of his adult life living what he preaches to others. He was committed to nonviolent resistance, to protest injustice, and people followed in his footsteps. He led them and India to independence because his life proved by example what could be done? The author says, although Gandhi's situation is very different from your own, yours, the principle is true. When you lead by example, you create a picture of what's possible. People can look at you and say, well, if he can do it, I can too. When you lead by example, it makes it easier for others to follow you. She says, look at legendary businessman Jack Welsh of General Electric. Welsh knew what Welsh knew that to push GE to new heights, he had to turn everything upside down. And that's just what he did. He developed the whole idea of bound, boundless organizations, boundaryless organizations. This means that everyone is, fee, is free to brainstorm and think of ideas instead of waiting for someone higher up in the bureaucracy to think of them first. He wanted his team turned loose, and he promised to listen to the ideas from everyone in the company. 
And he did. Everyone from the lowest line worker to senior managers got his attention. If they had something to say or a new idea that might make the company better, it wasn't just talk, and it didn't take his team long to figure that out. Welch stayed true to his passions, and what he knew was right. As a result, GE became an incredibly successful company under his management. His team was always willing to follow his lead because the people within it knew that he always kept his word. What does this mean for you? If you give yourself to your team and show them the way, then most likely they will follow you anywhere. And I think from our perspective, there definitely are more followers than leaders in the world based on the ratios. So I think even if you're an individual contributor or somebody who's just figuring things out, every action you have has an impact somewhere. The more people who see your action, the greater the impact. Negative actions have great impact. Positive actions can have great impact. So as we're looking about this from a personal development perspective, think about who you are and what your example leadership shows. Your example leadership could be as simple as when you're in a grocery store checking out and purchasing something. It could be you walking down the street, walking past a homeless person. What does your example leadership show? And as you start to understand that, it'll give you a better understanding on how you can tune your strategy. You're listening to my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to get a Navy SEALs perspective on leadership by example. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. You're listening to my strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, and we're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today and glad you can join us. Today we're talking about example leadership or leadership by example. Right before the break, we were talking about learning to lead by example. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about a different perspective on leadership by example. And I think that's what you're going to find is that you know, leadership by example or example leadership, whether you're looking at it from a CEO perspective or you're looking at it from an individual contributor perspective, everybody has a slight different nuance on what they think example leadership is. And, and, and really, more specifically, what are the actions, the, the actions, the good actions that people need to be doing to demonstrate that they are example leaders? So as we go through this journey today, I want to talk a little bit about one perspective. And this uh, article is in Inc. Magazine and was written by Brent Gleason, who's a keynote speaker and author of The Talking Point. He says here, a Navy SEAL climbs up the ladder attached to the side of a gas and oil platform during the training. And that's just the picture that he has here. He says, I serve with honor and off the battlefield, on and off the battlefield. I lead by example in all situations. That's the Navy SEAL creed. He says Navy SEALs are trained to be leaders regardless of age or rank. To put it another way, they are trained to earn trust. As I learn with the SEALs and relearn continually on a daily basis, people truly follow only those they trust. One of the best ways to build trust with the team is to lead them by example. Here are seven ways to lead by example and inspire your team. And this is uh, the reason I'm covering this particular vantage point is that you're going to see that different people have different leadership styles. And as we're looking at ways to lead by example in our own personal development, I want you to think about what are the ways that you lead by example. Who do you admire? Do you admire the Navy SEALs? Do you admire um, uh, Mahatma Gandhi? Do you admire uh, somebody else who has built up you know, the Red Cross or some other organization? That's really what we want to think about because at the end of the day, personal development is meant to help us and since we are all unique and individuals, we need to find mentors and those who align with our core values. 
So we're going to go through this and see what we can learn from how uh, Brent sees leading by example. Number one, get your hands dirty. Do the work and know your trade. You don't have to be the most advanced technician on the team, but you must have an in-depth understanding of your industry and your business. Leaders have many responsibilities, but it is important to work. So that's the first one. Number two, watch what you say. Actions do speak louder than words, but words can have a direct impact on morale. For better or worse, be mindful of what you say, to whom, and who is listening. Always show support for all team members. If someone needs extra guidance, guidance, provide it behind closed doors. That sounds like good feedback uh, or good, uh, good way to go about giving feedback. Um, respect the chain of command. One of the fastest ways to cause dis structural deterioration, foster confusion, and damage morale is to go around your direct reports. All team members need to respect the leadership at every level. If the senior leaders don't respect the chain of command, why would anyone else? Listen to the team. As leaders, sometimes we are so consumed with providing directive, giving orders, and, well, talking that we forget to stop and listen. If the recruitment and training engine is functioning well, you should have a whole team of experts to turn to for advice. One side of good leadership, one sign of good leadership is knowing that you don't know everything. Listen and get feedback from your team regularly. Take responsibility. As the saying goes, it's lonely at the top. Blame rolls uphill. Great leaders know when to accept that mistakes have been made and take it upon themselves to fix them. It doesn't matter if one of your team members messed up or you did. If you are the leader, you need to take responsibility. Let the team do their thing. Stop micromanaging. Communicate the mission, vision, value, and goals. Then step back and let the team innovate. Setting this example for the team will encourage your other managers to do the same. What you're going to find is this is a, a different perspective than you know what we do see uh, in, in every organization. Every organization is going to be a little bit different. You are going to have some that have the top-down chain of command, uh, very similar to what you would do in the military, where you, you, know, you need to respect wh what's in place and, and the process. If you don't, people die. Um, there's other businesses that uh, might have a, a different vantage point or different objective. They're trying to accomplish different goals. And as a result of that, when you talk about example leadership and leading by example, it's going to be a little bit nuanced. While some of these uh, concepts are similar, they are nuanced. And finally, he says, take care of yourself. Wellness and fitness are essential for good leadership. The more you take care of yourself, the more energy you will have and the better work you will do. The only way to build a fitness-oriented culture is to lead by example. Get in shape and lead in front of them. And I think I really like this one because this is a, a visual way to show the team that you practice what you preach. Imagine if you were the leader of a, of a gym and you had people come in working out every day and you were not in the optimal or the best shape that you could be. How, what would that show others who came into the gym to, and you're trying to sell them lessons, you're trying to sell them a membership? If they look at you and you're not in the best shape or you're not taking care of yourself and you're not in, in a position of strength, why would they sign up for the gym? Now, that might be a very simple example, but I think that we all need to be taking care of ourselves. We all need to be physically fit no matter what position we're in. Because at the end of the day, you know, leading takes effort. It takes energy. It takes stamina. And it takes being able to, to do things that others can't do. So those are some of the ideas uh, from the perspective of a Navy SEAL and what he sees uh, with regard to example leadership. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
When we come back, we're going to look at a second perspective on example leadership. And uh, really, I guess the key theme here is that example leaders need to gain trust. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is my strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, if you're just joining us to the show, welcome. Very happy to be here, but really glad you could join us. Uh, these uh, My Strategy episodes are live. They're on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. In this uh, show, we're talking about example leadership, talking about leading by example. We are always leading by example, learning to lead by example. Uh, we just went through a Navy SEALs perspective. We're going to talk a little bit about another perspective, which is example leadership to gain trust. And then we're going to give you some tips and tricks to build your example leadership strategy. We'd love to get your thoughts. If you'd like to send us uh, any thoughts, send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. And normally we have a giveaway um, that's up there. So go to uh, johnmhawkins.com or my Twitter handle at hawkinsjohn to see what the latest giveaway is. Um, I believe we don't have the, the, the most recent one up, uh, so give it a little bit of time. Maybe by the time you listen to the podcast, it will be there. So always check there for the latest and greatest. All right, so in this segment, I want to talk about a second perspective on leading by example. Now, right before the break, we were, we were talking about it from a Navy SEALs perspective. And uh, what I want to do is, you know, we, we talked about the Navy SEALs. Now I want to talk about this other perspective because you're going to see that while they both are leading by example and gaining trust uh, with their, um, those they lead in the organization, but it's a different way to do it. And the key is that there really isn't one way to be an example leader. There's multiple ways to do it. And that's where by lean you know, by being true to yourself and leaning on your core competencies, your core skills, and what you're best at, that's the way that you're really going to excel in leading by example. So this next uh, article I've got here is by Peter uh, Economy, and it's the leadership guy. And it talks about uh, his view on, on leadership. He says... Um, People watch every move you make, and it's not because they don't trust you, and it's not because they don't want to keep track of your every move. The reason your people watch you so closely is that they want to know if what you say and what you do are the same. That is, do you walk the talk? And I think that's you know important here. Leaders are talking. People are talking. Everybody's walking and talking, right? And... And that is the example that's being set. Everything you say is really an example to somebody who listens to you or hears you or, you know. And so it's so important for us to really have some, some strategies in place, some tactics that we can use so that on a daily basis, we are walking the talk. So he says, if you want to gain the trust and confidence of your employees, and believe me, that's something you definitely want to do. And I, like I said earlier in the show, I did a show on trust, a podcast on trust. Once you've lost trust, once you have lost trust with your peers, with anybody, you are in a severe disadvantage. And I, I would recommend that anybody go back and listen to that because there's things you can be doing on a daily basis that are breaking the trust and we don't want to do that. So it's very important to, to keep trust. So he says here, you must set an example for them. But it's not enough just to set the example. Your actions must be consistent with it. And so he gives us 11 ways to lead by example and to prove to members of your team that their trust is well placed in you. So number one, he says, be sensitive to people's feelings and be kind to them. Now, as you can see with the first one here, this is very different than the Navy SEALs perspective. And I'm doing that intentionally. We want to compare and contrast because ultimately you're going to need to pick up and develop your own tactics that you use. He says, everyone has a rough day or day when everything seems to go wrong. 
Be sensitive to those times for your employees and support them instead of tearing them down. Take time to make someone feel special. We all want to feel special. Take time to sincerely praise your employees for things that they do to advance your company or serve your customers. Listen to people's emotions as well as words. Remember that 60 to 90% of our communication is nonverbal. Learn to lead your learn to read your employees' body language as well as their emotions. View people's needs and wants as valid. Instead of jumping to the conclusion that your people can't sur quite survive well enough without things they tell you they want and need, take the position that they're valid and then do everything in your power to respond. Choose your battle wisely. Don't waste your time and energy engaging in fights that either have no consequence or that will leave you drained. I think that's true about personal development, right? I mean, as we're starting to think about all the things that we choose to engage with, that we choose to focus on, with personal development, we want to focus on those things that are going to help us get to our ultimate goal, our vision. And by choosing the wrong battle, that can be detrimental. Respect people's differences. Each one of us is unique. Take your employees' differences into account when you make decisions that affect them. Avoid being defensive and placing people on the defensive. Don't take on his feedback personally. Learn from it and use to improve. When you provide feedback to your employees, make sure that it's candid, fair, and honest. It helps your people. Give the people the benefit of the doubt. No one goes to work each day wanting to do a terrible job. Assume that each one of your employees is good and honest person who want to do the best job possible. Resolve interpersonal problems as quickly as possible. Don't let disagreements or hurt feelings fester. Treat people the way you'd like to be treated and never take people for granted. So as you can see, this is a little bit different take on leading by example, but I think ultimately what they're trying, what uh, Peter Economy is trying to do here is really trying to you know, foster trust within the organization. You know, juxtapose that with what we had from a Navy SEALs perspective, and that was really about command and control and providing structure and a way for people to innovate and to provide solutions based on that framework or structure. So I think that, you know, as we think about our own personal development and, you know, what we like and what we don't like, some of this has to do with the organizational culture. So the organizational culture of a military organization is going to be more similar to what the Navy SEAL has. And then there's other organizations that are going to be more similar uh, to what we've just talked about here. So that all comes into play as well, is really understanding your core values. What sort of environment do you like? What sort of environment makes you feel most comfortable? And sometimes it's not just you know, being in that organization and accepting it, it's finding an organizational culture that matches your organizational culture. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about developing your leadership philosophy. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, happy to be here with you today. I'm glad you can join us. Today we're talking about example leadership. Right before the break, we were talk getting a second perspective on example leadership, really focused on how do we gain trust. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about developing your leadership philosophy. And ultimately, this is the part of the show where we've learned enough and it's time to come up with our strategy. And so um, as part of the show, you know, we've got five different steps that we take. And I do five because it fits on one hand and that way uh, I can go through each finger and determine that I've not missed a specific step. So the first is awareness. What's our vision and goals? How do we assess and analyze? We need to assess the situation, get data, figure out what are some of the steps we're taking, we can take. Then it's strategize and plan. With your courses of actions already identified, start determining which ones 
you can put in place to achieve your goal, which ones you need to stop doing, which habits you need to break. Implement your plan. You know, we want to start executing on those new tactics, those new courses of actions. It's one thing to plan and strategize and come up with a new way of doing things. But if you don't do it, it's not going to help you. And then support and evaluate. Find out why that plan's not working. And this is iterative, so you can jump in at any point uh, during those five steps. And uh, the key is to continue to iterate and go through them. Uh, so what I want to talk about now is as we talk about our strategy, Number one, we need to know that we want to lead by example. And so um, one of the important things, I think, is to develop a philosophy. Because as you could see, when we talked about the uh, Navy SEAL, and then we talked about the other example, there's lots of different ways to show that you are leading by example. And so what, what this comes down to is, is you know, how do we develop a leadership philosophy that can do in, as we discussed in our first segment, that inspires others and helps them to innovate. How can we develop a philosophy? And I've got an article here by Anastasia um, called How to Develop a Leadership Philosophy that Inspires. And she says, think about the most successful leaders in the world. If you were to compare them to ineffective, inefficient leaders, a difference wouldn't necessarily come from their skills. The more important factor would be how the successful leaders would be able to provide you with a clear and defined approach on how to lead other people. And this is their leadership philosophy. And while you can learn from others on their leadership philosophy, your leadership philosophy is going to be unique and it is going to be based off of your skills. So she provides this pretty good guide uh, that can help you develop it. And I'm not going to go through the entire article because it is rather lengthy, uh, but she talks about, you know, what is the leadership philosophy? She says the combination of leadership and philosophy might sound rather odd. On the face of it, the terms don't seem to have much in common. So what does leadership philosophy mean? To understand it, it's a good idea to first examine the first two words separately. So she goes through the definition and says, um, you know, the word philosophy literally translates to love of wisdom. Oxford definition defines philosophy as a theory or attitude that acts as a guiding principle for behavior. So as we think about philosophy, she says, indeed, the guiding idea of philosophy is to live a good life. It's about striving for expertise and personal as well as collective fulfillment. Philosophy could be seen as the personal foundation or belief in human nature for working to live your life to the fullest. Through philosophy, you can create a system of thought to support your journey and obtain the guiding principles to use for action or non-action. As you can see, these are very different skills than what we do with regard to you know, leadership. And she says, leadership at its core is the ability to influence other people and to create a movement towards a specific objective. Having a vision to which the team moves forward is critical. Furthermore, the emphasis is on inspiration become, because leadership is not the same as bossing someone around to do what you want. A, leadership in, a leader inspires through his vision or her vision and motivates by leading by example rather than telling and intimidating or desired action. And therein lies the, the importance here is that you know when, when you're working with your man, and we did a whole segment on leadership versus a manager, but you really need to separate the two. The leader is going to inspire. They're going to walk the walk, talk the talk. A manager is so sometimes so focused on the objective that they aren't in a position to help you innovate. They aren't in a position. Sometimes something comes from command, you know, high command that comes down to, and is going to directly impact you. But from that perspective, you know, that, that is an order. It is a directive, something that you need to act on. It's slightly different when we're looking at our leaders as, as, as being inspired by them, as trying to you know, really look at their example. So she says this philosophy, leadership philosophy, can help. She says there's, three, there's some areas of it that we need to be thinking about. So one, the component is a theory, the way you define leadership and what it's all about. So how do you define leadership? What is it to you? An attitude. 
This is your mindset in regards of approaching leadership. What is your attitude, the mindset? And we did do a whole show on mindset. You can learn more about it uh, by going to my website or uh, searching for it. Uh, guiding principles, the principles and values you hold dear when you're thinking about leader, leading others. And behaviors, the behaviors you showcase in your journey to reach the desired results and outcomes. So from that perspective, as you're thinking about your example leadership and leading by example, it's important to think about it in the context of a philosophy or a framework and really start to add in those definitive things that you see as being leading by example and those things that are not leading by example. And, and your view and how you instrument and implement leadership by example could be very different than your peer. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to help you put your plan in place. I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. This is my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, right before the break, we were talking about a leadership philosophy and talked about how you should start to think about what your own philosophy is. And in case you missed this show, this broadcast, you can find us on iHeartRadio or Apple iTunes. And if you'd like to have something covered on the show, send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com or give us a call at 844-MY-STRATEGY. So today we've been talking about example leadership and we've been talking about what it is. At the end of the day, I think we are all example leaders. Uh, if somebody can see us, or not see us, at some point we are leading by example. Everything we do, everything we say that can be seen is an example to somebody else. So we are all example leaders. But if you think about it, how many of those things that you do, that you say, are influencing and inspiring others? You know, everything we say can have an impact. And as an example leader, or as leading by example, we really want to think about what are those things that we're doing that do inspire, that do influence. We talked a little bit about some of the leadership examples and how what those leaders thought they were doing might not really translate to example leadership. Yet in their mind, they were being example leaders. They were leading by examples. But when they don't do what they say and don't walk the, the walk and talk the talk, what happens is that we see a double standard. What they said, they're not willing to do. And when you see that double standard in leadership, it breaks trust. And in breaking trust, it bursts the balloon. And as a result of that, you have a very difficult time leading others. Very difficult time. And as we talked about that and really learned that from that perspective, a leader must always be cognitive of what they say, do, and make sure that all of that aligns. But what is leadership by example? Well, we went through a Navy SEALs perspective on what it is all about, including get your hands dirty, watch what you say, respect the chain of command very authoritarian, chain-of-command-driven type of example leadership. And that works. It works for the military, and it could work for many organizations. But, you know, there's always more than one way to do things. So we did look at a second perspective. The second perspective was being sensitive to people's feelings, choosing your battles wisely, resolving interpersonal problems quickly. That still is example leadership. It still is going out there, walking the talk, saying what you're going to do, and then doing what you said. But it's a different perspective. And, it's, and it all is, is a different way to do it. Now, one's not better than the other. But really, what you need to think about is, you know, what is my organizational culture? What am I comfortable with? And which style do I want, do I work best in? And sometimes it's choosing a company 
with an organizational culture to support who you are because that's how you're going to excel. We then talked about developing your leadership philosophy and the components of a leadership philosophy. And I think it's important for all of us, if we're looking at becoming that example leader, to break it down into those four different components that we talked about and really think about what are the things that you're doing that show leadership? What are the things that you're doing to walk the talk, you know, um, or walk the walk and talk the talk? But at the end of the day, once we've got all of this in place, it comes down to breaking habits. And in breaking those habits, we really need to be aware of those patterns. We need to be aware that what we're saying people should do isn't what we are doing, and that's hard to do. Because you know, many times we get into this notion that, you know, not that we're perfect, but that what we're doing is right and we're righteous and somebody else isn't. And finally, it comes down to prioritization and commitment to those goals and intentions and making sure that you commit to this. Well, that's all the show time we have for this week. Really appreciate you being with us here today. My name is John Hawkins. The show is my strategy. We're coming live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.